Hi everybody, it's Andrea Mercier, aka Anlum, and welcome to my studio. I am just in the process of editing a couple of other videos um, to get ready to put out onto YouTube. And I watched recently a couple of art journal flip throughs. I don't do art journaling. Um, I've talked about that in a couple of other videos that I really like the techniques that the art journalers do. However, I just don't do art journaling. I enjoyed the process of learning this past summer how to make an art journal. But I don't like filling the art journal. <laughs> so um, I don't have an art journal to flip through. However, I am getting ready to go to a craft sale at the end of this month. And I'm going to be selling off all of the paintings that I can that I've done over the last four years so that I can make room for more stuff. And um, I thought I would flip through those. I don't have a lot. I've only been painting for a short period of time. I've shown a few things already, um, like the uh, limited edition print that I've done and a couple of the pieces that I worked on in college. But I thought I'd flip through and then I would have an archive of the pictures that I have after they're sold. Because it's interesting. You want to sell them, but then once they're gone, they're not in your home for you to say, hey, look what I did. So... I'm going to do it this way. So I'm just starting randomly. Uh, these ones, uh, the first ones, are probably some of the first ones that I did when I first started to paint. So I did this one. This one's called Old Oak Tree. I think this is uh, one of the first classes I ever took. And then this one is called road to the bay these are all uh, 9 by 12s these are ones that I did in a class at Michael's when I first learned to paint this one was called sunset wave um, this is when I discovered that I didn't like the canvas showing through because obviously in a two-hour Michael's art class you the objective is to get the paint on so that you can have a finished picture when you go home. So I had to do it fairly quickly and that's when I discovered I don't like the seat of the canvas. This is called Solitary Pear. It was the first one I did on my own without any reference material or a class. I just sat down at home and I painted it. This is the same, this one is called Maple in the Meadow. It was the same source material as this first one. So I retook the class two years later because it was my friend Andy Pumphrey who was running the class so I decided I would go see her class again and I redid this one and I just whoops I think it's fascinating to see the difference in two years how much I think I grew as a painter I just think that's really neat that it was the exact same picture and this I had two totally different pictures come out of it this one here is called Sand Dunes at Sunrise. This is right here. This is all individual grains of sand that I actually painted on one by one. This was not a class. This I just did and I thought it was really cool. Um, it's one of my favorites. This one was uh, my homage to Edvard Munch. Scream, obviously. The original one was done on cardboard and I kind of got inspired and said, well, you know what, if a piece that was done on cardboard uh, can be in a museum, then, you know, I'll give it a shot. So I just did it. It was always one of the ones that I really liked and I tried to use it just with the primary colors. Kind of a primitive one. This one is Peggy's Cove Lighthouse. This one I did a couple of years ago in a class at Michael's again with my friend Andy Pumphrey. I like it. It's uh, it's pretty. I I had never done uh, a lighthouse before. I learned here. This is before I went back to college. So again, a little bit of perspective. I I had to learn that in college. So this one here is part of a triptych that I did. Uh, Peace, love, and joy. So when I first started following Patty Tolly Parish, this is the first piece I did. Definitely not my favorite piece because I hadn't really learned how to do layering. However, um, it was something that got me going on this road. This one was also a Michaels class with my friend Andy Pumphrey. I love this one. It's called Lilies in a Glass. 
and I love it. It's definitely one of my favorites, and when this one is sold, I will be a little bit sad. And of course, this is the one that I just did recently for the Art Fall Love. Sorry. Hashtag Love Fall Art. There we go. This is the one that I did. I'm going to be selling that one too at, uh, at the craft store. So those are all my 9x12s. And then I have some 16x20s. The, most of these I did in college. Um, but they need to go too because they take up a lot of room. There we go. So there's this one here. This one is uh, my homage to Salvador Dali. It's called Where Things Go to Die. And basically I wanted to create a Dali-esque landscape and then um, I was trying to demonstrate that you don't see telephone booths anymore and where do telephone booths go? You don't see them anymore. When I was a kid they were on every street corner and for a quarter you could call anywhere. So I did this kind of Dolly-esque limbo uh, where telephone and telephone booths go to die. Uh, this one is called, oh, I haven't put a sticker on it yet. It was called, what was it called? It, wine, paint, and brush. It was all you need to be an artist. It was something like that. And I loved my background. Um, my objective was to use the background paint, so yellow, green, and blue, and then use the opposite colors in the foreground. So red is the opposite of green, purple is the opposite of yellow, and um, orange is the opposite of blue. However, I, I hadn't learned how to do glazing and shadowing properly yet, so I was a little bit Oh, a little not disappointed, just it was part of the learning, right? And I wasn't I wasn't quite at that stage yet. But I still think it's a really cool painting. Um, it's very contemporary is not the right word. I can't I can't really think of what the right word is. It's different, but I definitely like it. This was an homage to Lauren S. Harris. I started this one for college and I didn't like it. This is actually unfinished. It probably needed a little bit more work. However, I don't want to paint over it. I, I haven't really decided what I want to do. I don't think I'll be able to sell this one, but this was an homage to Lauren S. Harris, which is one of the artists in the group of seven, which is a Canadian group of artists from the uh, early 20th century. So the like Tom Thompson, A.Y. Jackson were all members of it. And Lauren S. Harris really spoke to me when I went to go see them on a field trip in college at the National Gallery of Canada in Ottawa. So I don't know what I'm doing with this one. We were supposed to do an urban painting in school. Uh, this is not done. I still need to finish the shed. I still need to finish the chimney and the side portion here. This is actually the house that I grew up in in Canada on Banning Road um, and I never finished it because I just oh I don't know I didn't love it I the, but the more I look at it the more I get this urge to finish the painting so I'll probably do that one time during an art along we were told to do a super villain or actually I think it was any any comic book hero. And my favorite comic book hero is Batman. I love Batman because he doesn't actually have a superpower. He's the great detective and of course his biggest nemesis is the Joker. And I did this for college for that particular project. I love him. Um, however, I, if I was doing it again I could do something completely different. I mean obviously I love the hair. I really like his face. It's very angular, but again, I was I struggled with shading. I really, really struggled with shading um, in my college career. So you know, I was still learning. However, I don't know. I think you get twenty bucks for that one. This is my the homage to Lauren S. Harris that I finished in school. I love it. It's. Um, it's a recreation of one that was done up in Algonquin Park and I love it. I just, this is the reason why yellow ochre is one of my favorite colors. 
So this one I will miss when it's gone. But again, these take up so much room and there's only so much room that I have and I I like them, but to get them framed and to hang them in my house, I just I'm not ready to do that yet. I'm going to get my limited edition print done and hung up in my house and um I'm still sorry, a little bit sorry that I sold that one, although I was very excited when I did sell it. However, I, I miss it. So I kept the first of 100 for myself, and I'm going to have that one done and, and hung up on the walls. This one would be a close second. This one and the dolly one. Anyways, that's that's kind of it. Those are the only paintings that I have left. I, I sold off my teddy bear one. I have the daisy one that you saw, which is actually a second rendition. I had another daisy one that I gave to another friend. Um, I think that's it. Like in four years, that's pretty much what I've done. So thanks for joining me. I just, I just wanted to show them off a little bit and have uh, an archive of some of the pieces that I've done over the years. Thanks.